speak uh, out loud or talk to me in the chat. Then Sister, uh, Sister uh, Thompson, in about two minutes, I want you to read the responses. Fundamental. What comes to mind? How do you define fundamental? We didn't hear him, Pastor. What they say? Oh, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to tell him I'm going to repeat what he said. Can't cheat. So Brother Ray here in the sanctuary, he said when he hears this word fundamental, what comes to his mind, basic skills, steps, tools required to get started to accomplish the mission or the task. I want to yield to Sister Thompson. If you could share with us, give it about 10 seconds. Share with us what do you have in the chat. And then tell us, also tell us who's giving it to us. Anderson says core or central importance. Lawant and Miller says basic foundation. Uh, Sister Nellie Cooper says strong belief of a group. Amen. You guys are right on target. Here's the working definition. Fundamental, an essential part of the foundation or basis, that which affects the foundation. Now, we're talking from a spiritual perspective, the fundamentals of the faith. So ultimately, we want us to consider everything we've said, and then let's see if we agree that what Dr. MacArthur presents and what we've learned throughout time our lifetime, let's see if we agree that these things are fundamental. They are part of the foundation. Before I do that, here's a quote, and I would love for you to, yay or nay, if you agree, in the chat. Listen to this. All compromise is based on give and take, but there can be no give and take on the fundamentals. All compromise is based on give and take, but there can be no give and take on the fundamentals. I wanna poll the house, you agree or disagree? How are we looking, Sister Thompson, in the chat?
So if we identify the fundamentals of our faith and we agree that these things are fundamental, they affect our foundation as to what we believe, our salvation, then we ought to agree, as we've agreed in this little test pilot, that some things we cannot compromise on as it relates to our faith. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the operations of the local church. This, this curriculum deals with our faith universally, worldwide, home and abroad. Michael Jordan said, get the fundamentals down and then the level of everything you do will rise. If the church, the body of Christ, really master the fundamentals, the sky then is the limit if you were to put what Michael Jordan, the, base, the basketball player says. Tell me if you agree with this, how, how um, easy it is as part of our human nature to not even consider the fundamentals. For example, this is a fact statistically, most people don't know where their food comes from. We're confused about the fundamentals. How is it that our food wind up on our plates? How exactly is it that when I flick the switch, the lights come on? Those of us who have raised children and been raised by parents, when we are children, money is not known. We don't have a clue as to how fundamental the dollar is. We simply say, I want this. I remember giving, giving my mom a Christmas list probably then was thousands of dollars. And then we didn't even have thousands of dollars coming into the household on a monthly basis. Fundamentals are critical. And if you have someone part of the organization, part of the mission, part of the vision that is unlearned of the fundamentals or ignoring the fundamentals, then it makes the vision accomplishing, accomplishing the goals and the objectives of the vision even that much harder. So we're gonna go back, Valerie, I wanna look at the, the mission statement again. And I wanna to suggest to us, I want you to tell me, and as we're looking at it, I wanna say, say this to you. And again, we're warming up, we're gonna, we're, you're gonna, you're gonna appreciate fundamentals of the faith, I hope. Um, Type in, the, type in the chat box as you're looking and reading, what are your thoughts on this question? The difference between an objective and a goal. The difference between an objective and a goal. Give me, give me your thoughts and then I'll give you uh, the working definition. And then ultimately, we're gonna take a look at our mission and then I'm gonna ask Sister Valerie if it's possible to take us to our website because I saw our vision statement earlier today on the website. And I want us to know the difference between the mission of our local church and the vision as it relates to one being, one being an objective, one being a goal. And we gotta know what the difference in an objective and a goal. Sister um, Thompson, I'm gonna to yield to you to tell us what's being said in the chat, the difference between an objective and a goal. Anybody wanna unmute and try it? Go ahead, Dr. Whitehurst. <laughs> You're, you're on mute. And those, and those of you that are in the audience, audience, the difference between an objective and a goal. When you talk about an objective, it has to be specific and it has to be measurable. 
When you talk about a goal, it is broader in scope. You're right on. Right on. Yeah. That's it. Objective is you want it. Okay, okay. So here's the working definition. Sister Whitehurst hit it. Mama Flo, you, you put the cream on it. A goal is an objective you want to achieve, while an objective is a specific and measurable action that can be reached in a short amount of time, often related to a goal. When written down or written out, goals are usually broad statements rather than a step-by-step -step process. They're often long-term endeavors. The plan, the purpose, and the program of this body of believers is to meet the mandate and the commission of the Father as outlined in the Word of God and inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's very broad because it's assuming, our mission assumes that we know the word of God. It assumes that we know the mandate of God, very broad. Our mission is to be an empowered church. That does not happen overnight. And what happens in many of our African-American churches, an empowered church doesn't even happen under one tenure, one pastor. If we can create this spirit of being self-sustainable, I, I am so convinced now that we have to put the spirit out there that is bigger than any person or personality, starting with the pastor. And that's, that's, that's what Christ did when he put forth the universal church. So now that's, that's our goal. Our mission statement is our goal. It says, Valerie, can we go to the website? Uh, and I want you to see the vision. When you look at the vision, this is the specific step-by-step -step way in which we believe here at New Bethel that we can accomplish the goal in the mission statement. I'm going to hush and yield to the Zoom audience, I want you all to read the vision. To you, Bethel, Missionary Baptist Church, the vision of spiritual healthy church, and we stand ready for action in that we have the three A's, a desire to teach, a continued preparation to teach, and an audience who wants to be taught. We desire to be spiritually healthy, local church body, through a spiritually balanced diet, giving equal importance to five New Testament categories, evangelism, worship, Christian education, discipleship, mission. So there's our step-by-step. -step. That's our objective, to create a spirit of teaching and learning always preparing courses, classes, putting excitement in the air that the people who are part of our church have a desire to learn. Now, why is that important? Because back to the fundamental, if we're unlearned, if we're unlearned about the basic things, those things that affect the foundation, we will be unsuccessful in accomplishing our goals. Let's go to the next slide, let's get into this. And most of this is review uh, from when we opened this curriculum up uh, before the holidays, Fundamentals of the Faith. Now, these two scriptures are critical. The salvation of the laws. Erase everything that you thought the church was about. This church is about people, unsaved people, getting saved. Now we have lost that because we have abandoned the fundamentals. 
we being the universal church across the country. We have made the local church about, in a, from a priority perspective, everything but this. And it's obvious in heaven if it's not obvious on earth. We are supposed to be our number one priority, let me say it this way, should be saving, saving the laws. The Apostle Paul says this is so important as it relates to the fundamentals of our faith. He tells the saints there in Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, I made up my mind. He says, I am determined to know nothing among you. I'm not trying to impress you. If I was to paraphrase this with any intelligence, I'm not trying to show you how, 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 how versed I am in politics and, and other things. That's, that's not why I'm here, because that is not the fundamental purpose of the church except Jesus Christ. I need you to know that if I don't know anything else, I know Jesus. And I know that he was crucified. Then he goes on, he says later, to another group in uh, Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 4 of the book of Thessalonians. But just as we have been approved by God, to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. So the, the preacher, the preacher has to come to the conclusion that the number one priority is sharing the gospel and making himself better every day. And if the preacher comes to that conclusion, that determination, as Paul said, and every other church leader, that's, that ought to be our goal. Here we now, we get objectives. I need to be better at sharing the gospel. The deacon needs to be better. The trustee, every lead servant, I need to be better because that then enables me to have more capacity, a better ability to accomplish the goal. Look over in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. God has given us everything we need. The gifts, they are here in the local church, in the universal church. He gave some apostles and he's, and he's gift, gifted these gifts throughout generations since the birth of the church. Some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, not to look good, not to be popular. These gifts have been gifted to the church to equip the saints. So if we have unequipped saints, and this, this is, and I love this, perhaps if someone want to chime in, I think that this is one of the biggest flaws of our current age. Those of us who know, we've stopped sharing what we know, equipping others. How many of us have been in the church a long time? I remember when I joined the usher board, Sister, Sister White, I joined the junior usher board. We would go to rehearsal and the lady or the guy who knew how to usher would walk us through it. We literally got a practical equipment on how to be an usher. Then you sing, sing in the choir. Back in the day, they taught us. They taught us how to breathe. I see some of that taking place. We had Baptist training union. They taught us the books of the Bible. They equipped the saints. And we, we are falling short. Any, anybody disagree with me? Anybody agree with me? I, I just want to give, give a minute. Y'all ain't talking to me. Let's go to the next slide. I see Sister Thompson says she agrees. So Paul says I'm determined. These, this is our 
what we're going to deal with. These are fundamentals. We're going to introduce at the conclusion of tonight's hour, lesson number three. God, his character and attributes. Type in the text so that you don't go to sleep. How many of us would agree that to know God is a fundamental? That ought to be a basic. And know everything that, that we could possibly know. How many of us would agree to know the person Christ is a fundamental as it relates to our faith? The work of Christ, yea or nay, what he did. How many of us agree that salvation, understanding everything the Bible shares with us, how a person can be saved, what is required, if anything is required, to have salvation? What does salvation mean as deep as we can, can discover it? Because that's why we do this for eternal life. That's a fundamental. The fundamental of Number seven, I can't read that. The person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's a fundamental. You all agree? Prayer is a fundamental. How many of us know that there are many people in our congregations today that do not know the basics of prayer? After prayer, the church fellowship and worship, spiritual gifts, evangelism, spiritual obedience, and God's will and guidance. So these are the fundamentals we want to, we want to discuss as long as God would allow us as it relates to the fundamentals of the faith. And we've all agreed, next slide, Valerie, that fundamentals, the fundamental is critical. Now, We will never, in order to get everything, those 13 topics, that means, and I need you all to talk to me in the chat and here, and this is something that is the elephant in the room in many of our churches. We must take God's word serious. That's the only place, the only tool we're going to become knowledgeable of the fundamentals. Those things that affect the foundation. And I say this to, to Reverend Allen often, and I, and I, and I love him. I, I mean, I could sit here his teaching. And when I, when, if I ever look frustrated and sitting in one, in one of Reverend Allen's classes, it's not at Reverend Allen. Reverend Allen has a gift to go beyond the fundamentals. And that's great. But too many people are sitting in universities and don't even know the basic elementary stuff. And so it's just going right over their head. Somebody ought to say amen. The scripture says, the Bible says, all scripture is given by God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Type in the text. I'm going to give you two statements. I'm going to call them statement number one and statement number two. I want you to tell us which statement you agree with. Either statement number one, which is the Bible contains the word of God. Statement number one. And those of you that are in the audience here at the sanctuary, I just want you to hold up your hand one or two, but you got to hear statement number two. Statement number one, the Bible contains the word of God. Here's statement number two. The Bible is the word of God. Statement number two, the Bible is the word of God. Tell me in the chat which statement you agree with. Tell me in the sanctuary 
by holding up your hand, which statement you agree with? Brother Horn, statement number two, sister, you know I was gonna ask that. Sister Koger, statement number two, sister White, statement number two, brother Ray, number two, sister Marlena, number two. Anybody in the chat likes number one? Now, number two. Okay, so this is, this is good. There's hope. We all agree on fundamentals, what a fundamental is, how critical, how essential a fundamental is. It affects the foundation. We all agree that there's a difference between a goal and an objective, and in order to accomplish the goal, then we must engage in the objective because the objective is measurable. It takes us step by step. Now, in order to accomplish the fundamentals of our faith, we must look at the Bible as the word of God. Everything in the Bible now becomes critical. Every believer who's convicted as to what we've verbally stated that the Bible is God's word, then it's unexcusable within our own spirit to not engage in knowing this book called the Bible. Everybody agree? Now, the Bible is critical for the believer because the believer has the gift to equip the saints. And equipping the saints, it helps us accomplish the mission and move forward in the objectives. Go to the next slide. The good thing about God, he's so wise that even the unbeliever will know that he exists. There are two types of revelation, making that which is unknown known, natural revelation, coming to know God in the created world through reason. Then there's special revelation, which we're going to talk about throughout this particular Bible study, that's the scripture. But I don't want anybody to become concerned that you can't know God, your children can't know God without being in Bible study. As a matter of fact, that's no doubt. Natural revelation is what's driven all of us here. Type in the chat box, when you think about creation, how is it, one or two words, that a person can know that God exists without ever coming to church, without ever reading their Bible. Think of creation. And I don't want to, I don't want to call out anything. I don't want to give away any answers, but think of creation. Uh, when you walk outside, wherever you travel, how can we know that there must be a God somewhere? So the inside sanctuary said, looking at the air, the trees, the universe, man has no explanation for the stars, the moon. He has no explanation. He did not create that. It did not come out of a lab. There's no manual as to how we can create stars and moons. Do we have any, any additional comments in the chat box, Sister Thompson, on natural revelation? changing of the weather. Wow. Yes. Changing the season, season. That's that's God. That's natural. And 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 I, and I and it's twofold. I want us to not be concerned that God would not manifest himself without us coming to Bible study. However, those of us who are believers, we want to move beyond natural revelation. We need to mature in special revelation which comes only by way of studying the scriptures. That's the only way you're going to get it, studying the scriptures. Next slide, Sister Valerie. Time is moving swiftly. Revelation in theology refers to information that comes from God to reveal truth about himself or about ourselves and the world around us. Revelation is then divided into two types, natural revelation, which some call general, and then there is special.
special revelation. Next slide. This is just a chart. Take a picture of it. Some of you have the book. Uh, general revelation, everybody gets that. But it's not enough to be saved. It's enough to know what's right and what's wrong. Being human alone gives us access to general revelation. We learn basic morality. We know that God exists. We don't have to have any prior knowledge of the, of the Bible. But special revelation, and this is, this is the atmosphere that I want to partner with those who have come before me. And the one person, you hear his name often in the halls of New Bethel, a fellow by the name of D.N. Connor. I'm, I'm not concerned if I never become a songster, never become a hoopologist, because that does not accomplish our mission. The more our people get engaged in God's word, studying God's word, the mission, accomplishing the mission becomes that much easier. Man, I wish, I wish y'all understood that. Special revelation only comes, uh, it was said to and said by people in scripture, deals with the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, discusses salvation and how to get into heaven, detailed accounts through biblical verses, and special revelation is what demands, commands us to spread the word. Next slide. So let's get acquainted with the Bible, and that's what this is about. Uh, the fundamentals of the faith. Let's understand the general theme of the Bible, how the Bible was developed, timelines, covenants, uh, details of each book of the Bible. And after what we've discussed, none of this should bore us because this is the objective that will accomplish, help us accomplish the goal. Let's learn the Bible like never before, like never before, the Old and the New Testament. Who do we have off mute? Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, Deacon Gainwell, I'm going to yield. Yes. Pastor, what's the difference between revelation and illumination? Good question. So revelation is there. So Phil Park, can I use you for an example? You, you, darling. So, so D, I, um, I asked my wife the other day, um, where was something, I forget what it was, I didn't have any clue as to where what I was looking for was located in the house. She revealed to me that what I was looking for was in the kitchen. And she even told me exactly a drawer to look in. But Deke, I still couldn't see it. Finally, she revealed to me, that's revelation. I know where it is. Finally, she comes to me and she opens the drawer and she says, Sister Eagle, do I need to just get it for you? That was illumination. She literally pointed to it. Now I see it. But the fact that I didn't see it, and I don't have to tell you all, I swore up and down it wasn't there, but it was there. And so, Deke, I'd say that's a good question from this perspective, and you, and you may add, uh, the secrets to life, God has told us, they're in the Word of God. We can be successful in everything we do. That has already been revealed to us. The illumination is when we the light comes on and we said, wow, I've been here, I've been here now 50 years in this thing called church, and now I see it. It's been here the whole time. You got anything to add to that, Dick? No, you did on the money, Pastor. Yeah, good. And, and, and that's what I'm hoping, you know, we, it's, it's like, you know, bad analogies, like, um, 
Back in the day, we used to do Easter egg hunt and walk around, and then all of a sudden, you hear something say crack. You done stepped on the egg. It was there, and then now you see it, yes. Uh, we have a couple of more slides. We're almost done. Sister um, Thompson, you, you, you bring me back in if I, if I miss somebody. Thank you. So an epiphany would be um, a revelation. Is that correct? I don't know. Let me uh, ask my good friend Google. I know. <laughs> I, I want to say that an epiphany would be an illumination, but you educators chime in. That's a good question. An epiphany. That's an awakening. Yes. Would that would. Revelation is the fact that it is made known to us that it's there. Sister Eagle, Sister Bullet, Sister, Sister Dr. Whitehurst, Sister Map. Sister Map says an, an illumination. I, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. That's an illumination. The light comes on. I had. Yeah, but it's. It's, you know, it could be subjective, uh, Sister uh, Thompson, within the context. He came to himself. Yeah, uh, Brother Ray is reminding us of the prodigal son. He had an epiphany. He came to himself. The light came on. Yeah. All right, next slide. Good question. I, I just want to close tonight on this word of God. These things are written. Put in the chat box these next three slides. I need, your, I need you to um, type your answers. These things are written that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life. What two reasons are given for the writing of John's gospel here in John 20, 31. The answer is in the scripture. Two things are in the scripture. And this is something that when we have membership orientation, we really try to stress this. A lot of times we want to answer things and say everything but what the scripture has said. There are two reasons given in the scripture. Sister uh, Thompson, tell me who's the first person to get it or what they have. I see Sister Thompson has believed that Christ is the Son of God. That's one. Nobody else giving it a shot? Believing, that's it. Believing that you may have life in his name. Two reasons we have John 20, 31. The scripture gives us the two reasons. One, that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. It's just repeating the scripture. And that in believing that, we have eternal life. That's powerful. Don't miss it. That's, that's fundamental. That's why we're here. That's why we're part of church. Go to the next slide. Fill in the blank. Christ in the Bible, the Old and New Testaments, should be seen together as both portray Jesus Christ as the central figure. Read the following verses and fill in the blanks. Luke 24, 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them that, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Christ is seen in all the scriptures. You, would have, you wouldn't have been wrong, Old and New Testament. 
you see it right there? He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures. This is a little exercise where it's called hermeneutics, where scripture interprets itself. Not all scriptures. There's some things we have to reference. But a lot of times we add and we make it harder than what it is. Christ, the Bible tells us that Christ is in all scripture. It's Christ himself. John 5, 39. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Jesus said that the scriptures bear witness of who? Itself. Me. Him, Christ. Him. So, and so here's the point of this. Go to the next slide. No matter, as we engage in scripture, and I know it seems basic, and I know we don't sound deep all the time, but Jesus said it. Scripture is about him. Scripture, you're studying the scripture because scripture, all scriptures, are going to tell you about me. Scripture testify of me, me being Christ. Why is the Bible important? It's a fundamental thing. We've got to know the Bible. In order to accomplish, in order to accomplish the mission, we all get that now. Deuteronomy 8.3. Old Testament, he humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man, mankind, does not live on physical bread alone, but by every word. And so God tells the Old Testament audience that you can spiritually die of starvation. Then it comes to the New Testament. The scripture comes to the New Testament in Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus answered, it is written. Jesus confirms what was said in Deuteronomy. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Scripture is important. It is critical. Go to the next slide. Put in the chat box the answers, if you will. Y'all don't go to sleep on me. We're almost done. What does 2 Timothy 3.16 say about the Bible? 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So when you read that scripture, which statement do you agree with? Statement number one, some of the Bible is inspired by God. Put yea or nay for statement number one. Statement number two, there are few parts that are not inspired. Brother Ray's already come to the answer number three, the entire Bible is inspired by God. I see number three is coming in the chat box. And then the fourth statement, only those parts that speak to us in a personal way. Don't fool yourself. Now, if we say that, then we have to respond day to day like that. Scripture, all scripture comes from God, all of it. Let's go to the next slide. How does the following verses show the importance of God's word? Hebrews 4.12. You can type in your responses, give some thought to it. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide, dividing soul and spirit. The Bible will separate father and son mother and daughter, husband and wife. The Bible, which is truth, will put, put us on different sides. Separates joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. We've been taught by the Holy Scriptures from childhood, Paul says to Timothy, and they have given you the wisdom to receive 
the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. How important is the word of God? Sister Thompson, do we have any responses that we want to share as it relates to that question? Sister Valerie has something there. She has the scripture. Okay, you put in the scripture. I got you. Let's go to the next slide. Very important. What four things does God's word do for us? 19 7. Psalms 19 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So it converts the soul. The B part of the verse, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So God's word saves me. God's word gives me wisdom. The C part of the verse, the statues of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. God's word saves me. God's word gives me wisdom. God's word gives me joy in my heart. The commandment of the Lord, and I think that verse got cut off. The commandment of the word. Some, some, somebody find Psalms 19, 8. 19, 8. 19, 8. Read that for me. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. You can gain where you got your Bible. Somebody got your Bible. I need 19. Hey, go ahead. Revised, revised Standard Version says, and the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. There's that illumination, the en enlightening, allowing us to see how beneficial God's word is. Let's Let's get ready to go home. Next slide. And so this is the key, New Bethel, family and friends. Let's apply it. If we believe God's word, if we've said it, if we believe and we've said it, God's word is this important, then let's apply it. Based upon what we've learned, the lesson about the Bible, what should your response be? Let me tell you something. And, and I know... I, there's always room for improvement from, every, from a teacher perspective, and I'm going to do my best in this new year. I'm going to do my best to start on time, end on time, bring my A game to the Bible study. And if I do that in my application, even if a phone tree message doesn't come out, Bible study has got to be critical. It has to be at the top of our minds. So to the point that we're sharing with others, come to Bible study. Got to, you got to get in this Bible study. You got to get engaged in God's word. If indeed we believe that God's word is critical, it, is an, it affects the foundation for us to not know it. It betters, it betters that which stands on the foundation when we know God's word. One more slide. Uh, there's a, there is a, um, a video. I don't, we're not going to play it tonight. Uh, just show it, Valerie show it real quick. I want you all, if this is a homework assignment, it's only seven minutes. I'm not going to play it. We're just going to show you what it looks like. It's one of my most favorite sites, Got Questions. It talks about the character of God. It opens up what we're going to deal with next week if the Lord says the same, the character of God. Because now as we get engaged in God's word, we've got the fundamentals. And one of the fundamentals is to, we, we've already, the big picture is we've got we to gotta take the Bible serious. Now, let's look at what the Bible is going to teach us. The Bible is going to teach us everything we need to know about God. And this particular video opens up, I think the passage comes from the Exodus uh, book of the Bible. And so, that's not it? Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, the other one, put this in the chat box. A, so I want you to watch this video, The Character of God. And the other video uh, got questions. That's the one I tried to uh, text you. If you can put that in the chat box, Sister Valerie. Two, two videos, and we'll, we'll watch these videos next week. Uh, but I would love for you to have watched them so we can discuss them. The other one talks about 
uh, the studying studying the Bible or, or the Bible being God's word. So this one this one is the character of God, how He's merciful, lovable, faithful, but at the same time, He applies justice. He applies justice. And we're made in the image of God. How many of us have ever, ever heard yourself say, don't take advantage of my kindness? You ever heard yourself say that? Don't take it. We get that from God. We get that from God. God will allow us to go only but so far. And then he brings the hammer down. But if you don't know God, you say things like, well, you know, God wouldn't do me like that. God going to love me in spite of. That's a person that's not really reading their Bible. That, you, you know, when you think about your children, they know that there's only so far you can go with daddy or mama. They know that. And they'll hear people say, my daddy, my mama, they're the nicest person. And they don't disagree with that, but they also know there's a, there's a limit. And we got, we got to learn that even about, even about God. So you got those two videos. I thank you all so much. It is 8 o'clock. I hope, I hope that I've at least got your attention uh, for this Bible study curriculum. Uh, Valerie, as Reverend Allen said, can you just bring us all together so I can get some idea? Uh, how, many, how many of us are here? Uh, I guess it's my view. Huh? I guess I got to check. There we go. Yes. All right. I see you. Um, uh, just listen, you all help me call out names if you're on the screen. I, I see Sister Mapp and Mama Flo and Sister Eagle and Sister Bird. And I see Deacon and Sister Dean. I know that uh, we miss you all the last two weeks. Good to see you all. Sister Seabrook, she left before I got to the church today. She ran out of here before I got here, Brother Bullard and Sister Bullard. Good, good, good evening. Sister Bullard, are you a better AKA now, now that you've gone to the conference? And uh, Sister Ann Jones and I am because I'm 50 years. Amen, amen, amen. I see even Sister May Dukes, Deacon and Sister Thornton, Dr. Whitehurst, and Brother and Sister Anderson, Sister Sanja Lynn Kennedy. I see Sister Shirley Bryant, and she stayed to the end. Hashalamajisha, Jesus. Amen. Sister Bernice Wooten, Sister Brown, good, good evening, Sister Matt. Sister Cooper, is Deacon Cooper close to you? Amen. I think that Moto G stylus, I think that's uh, Minister Pew. Is that Minister Pew? Moto G. Portia Williams, one of our new members. I think, I sp yes, I spoke to Sister Portia this earlier today. Sister Nellie Cooper. Uh, I, that is my first screen. I know I'm missing somebody. The old folks say you shouldn't call names because you're going to miss someone. A deacon, a Dr. Um, Williams, can I tell y'all a secret? Uh, Sister Crystal, Tiffany, Devonia Thomas, Motorola Edge, Anthony's iPad, Pam Smith, Galaxy, iPhone Maria, Elrich, Chelsea, D. Brown, Henson, the iPad, uh, Ann Jones, Nellie Cooper, Portia Williams. Can I tell y'all a secret? If you, um, y'all going to get mad at me. If you turn your camera on, you get you get to be on the first screen. You know, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> if you turn your camera on, you come to the top screen. Uh, I have nothing. I have nothing else. I have nothing else tonight. Amen. Um, thank you all for turning your cameras on and smiling. Uh, this week, Dr. Williams, Dr. Richard Williams will be here on site. He's going to be our preacher in the 1015 hour. Sister Bullard, can you arm the, arm the couples ministry to join the outreach ministry and the young adults for the fifth Sunday uh, to give a presentation? Our, our youth, they, they're asking for a little bit more time and and with the couples event coming up, it would be appropriate to get our couples ministry on the fifth Sunday. Uh, we're going to be prayerful and make an adjustment to our outreach walk. Our Northern Fellowship is going on and uh, members of our church have been asked to participate 
and as moderator, it just won't look good for it for the period that I'm competing uh, with an association activity. So uh, we may may look at Saturday before the first Sunday, but we are going to do the outreach. And I can see Sister Map. I can read your thoughts. You're saying, well, now that the Dolphins are no longer playing, maybe we can walk on Sunday afternoons. I, amen. I hear you, Sister. Amen. <laughs> but we are going to we're going to readjust. Uh, timing. I uh, I am having problems uh, with my camera, Sister Bird. Thank you for that. Um, this Saturday we have membership orientation. Super Saturday. Each league servant, if you can, if you can, the last hour. I would love for those who are new members, not that it's limited to new members, to meet you all. Every ministry, if you can come by the church or sign in on the Zoom channel. You don't have to be here physically. I would love to use the last hour where those who are new to New Bethel, they meet the lead servant of the ministry. You will have three, three minutes to kind of talk about what your ministry uh, does and how you help us accomplish our objectives and goals. Uh, Super Saturday membership orientation starts at 745 this Saturday morning. 745 we will probably meet is it best to meet here in the sanctuary valerie i know you may not be here but you can um okay oh saturday is going to be bad minister Pew, you guys are doing something in sanctuary i heard somebody saying mm, that's bad was that you minister Pew? it did yes this Saturday, 7.45, let us pray. Dean Cooper, Sister Wooten, you've got 30 seconds. Sister Wooten, you first. Deacon Cooper will close us in prayer. And Brother Sylvester Bryant, on the passing of his mother, he's the spouse of Sister Shirley Bryant. And Sister uh, Jones is online this, this evening, but she's still recuperating. Sister Mary Jones is here? Yes, she, she was online. Amen. Good evening, Sister Mary. She was early. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, ditto what Sister Wooten said. All right. Close us in prayer, dear. Oh, God, I have an ages past. I hope for years to come. I'll shelter from the storm and blast and I'll return home. And the Father, just, just like to thank you for another day, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the roof up over our head. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood, Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for the for the word that we got tonight, oh, Heavenly Father. I ask you to continue to bless us and keep us, keep our church family together, oh, Heavenly Father. I ask you to continue to bless each and every one of our family members near and far, oh, Heavenly Father. Be bless the sick and the shut ends, oh, Heavenly Father. Bless our pastor and his wife, oh, Heavenly Father. Until we meet again, our son, Jesus Christ, name I ask. Amen. 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 Good night, Good night. New Bethel. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Don't forget to get your ticket for the Valentine dinner dance. Yes. <laughs> Good night, Deacon Dean. Peace, Peace. Brother Ark. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, good night, good night my brother. Good, good night, Tomboy. Anyway. All right, good night. Uh, <laughs> good night, Tomboy. <laughs> 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 okay, but.